I'm Louise Beard from Forward Insight and Strategy and I'd like to welcome you to the NZCN Tourism webinar series. This program is focused on building value to and from the China FIT market and is part of a larger program looking at building value um, from this market to New Zealand and to New Zealand operators in the tourism sector. The program is larger than these webinars and in the program there are very full reports a number of modules in full, top tips and guides around social media, the how-to and also links in through our Facebook, Twitter and WeChat programs. This module is module two and it's about enabling experiences. The fuller documents are available on the website. So in this module we are covering um, overall cultural insights around the Chinese mindset very briefly and cultural navigation, the help and assistance um, that our Chinese visitors are looking for, some tips on Chinese language, planning tools, um, how to manage deals, bookings and payments, being found and building networks. So just to start with, it's very easy um, to touch China visitors, um, FIT hearts and minds. The FIT group that we're talking about today is the Free Independent Traveller and we can really make a difference by having a greater cultural understanding of what's important to them. One of the key things relating to product is that our Chinese independent visitors love to travel together and being together and sharing is much more than just being part of a group, it's, be, it's a real ethos. So in order to better meet the needs of um, the independent Chinese who are coming um, in shared um, groups, not as a group traveller but um, in, in what we call a cluster, is to make sure that whatever your business is that you can actually deal with um, groups coming together, that you have got um, a, a, an opportunity for different people within groups to have perhaps slightly different experiences and if you've got an offer that um, involves um, breaking a group up or some people having a go before others, that you've got some plan um, for what people that are waiting are going to do and that we can make a great experience from watching as well as engaging. So in terms of cultural navigation, um, the, probably one of the most important things is that our Chinese visitors are very respectful they do not want to do the wrong thing and it's you can be very confident to outline any rules or guidelines um, with respect. They don't want to lose face and if Chinese our Chinese visitors know what's expected, um, they absolutely will follow those guidelines. If you're having any problems or concerns at all, make sure that you do provide these guidelines and translate them into Chinese if it's particularly important because although one member of the group may be reasonably fluent in Chinese, often Chinese language skills aren't necessarily great and people will not always tell you that they don't understand. A welcome with real warmth and attention is very, very important and can make a huge difference. It's more than just actually knowing that they are welcome, it's about building relationship and that sense of relationship and respect. So make sure that the welcome starts before they even get to you, have a very clear welcome on the web page. If you translate key points of your web page into Chinese that will even help more. Have very, very clear open signage so visitors know that you um, are open and they're not going to be embarrassed and um, turn around. Make sure that you have someone present and that the frontline team absolutely understand about attentive customer service. And simple greet greetings like ni hao, which is the Chinese hello, can make a huge difference. A small thing, ask Chinese visitors where they're from, shows an interest and is a real conversation starter and can be appreciated. Small things like that can make a real difference. Our Chinese visitors want a very hands-on experience to be up close and personal, to have zero distance immersive experiences, to try and learn to do new things that they've never done before and be able to tell their friends about it. 
to do this though they want help and assistance um, and an opportunity to learn so it's not necessarily doing things um, that are hard but actually having a go saying I've done it and a feeling of achievement at the end of the experience but it has to be easy often our Chinese visitors are not necessarily um, terribly fit or terribly physically experienced um, in activities so they will need help and don't want to become tired or stressed. They are very receptive if they're informed about giving things a go, trying things different ways and understanding how to enjoy themselves in different experiences. So telling and explaining um, and managing expectations means that they will be open to a variety of different experiences in terms of food, activities, accommodation um, and in general. Just another note here on physical capability and dexterity. Um, a number of activities and exercises that we have are not that familiar to them, so anything that you can do to either provide instruction or make it easy um, will really help. So things like um, not expecting everyone to kayak for a long distance, um, perhaps have one kayak or a little boat that has a motor and can pull other people along, so that you get out there, have a go, get the photo um, and then actually are able to enjoy it rather than having to work hard. And again examples of assistance, um, you know, have the tractor for people to ride on um, rather than expecting people to walk up a hill, do something in a gator and provide real instruction and hands-on help for new experiences, for example clay bird shooting. Zero distance immersion, so that our visitors feel real, feel that they are there and part of it, uh, makes a real difference. And that's about hands on, that I actually touched it, I did it, I tried it, I was a part of it. Um, and the idea of really getting involved in nature and sitting there and listening as well as doing is important. So not always to have really high energy um, go, go, go activities, but actually break up the pace and enable people to actually become really involved. So if we look at what does zero distance and immersion mean, it's very much about being part of that 100% pure New Zealand environment experience. Uh, but it's doing that in a way that's very vibrant and alive, not dull and boring, and that there is a real sense of experience. What exactly can I do? How am I going to become part of this and experience it myself? And that will enable people to really see it, do it, share it, touch it. So is there a way for people to be able to have a go at making the ice cream, to have a chance to um, hold on to the steering wheel, to um, actually touch and feel what um, Lambs was like? Help and assistance, um, very definitely a need for that and if we provide this um, well, it can elevate um, our traveller's experience. At the moment there is a support gap and um, over half of our visitors from China who are independent travellers would like to be able to access professional guidance right now. So any way to link up with um, authentic, uh, bona fide and well qualified um, guides and um, people who can help show and introduce Chinese to experiences in New Zealand if it was there would be highly valued. So do you provide it or do you know somebody who can to put people in touch with? Um, eyesight knowledge, a very very strong interest in this, 91% want to use it but only 85% of those who have been here have actually found the service. So once we get um, eyesight's visibility up for Chinese, it's a great place to be a part of and to have a presence in because our visitors do want to use it. And in terms of language, um, people do also want, if we can provide it, um, greater clarity and a greater sense of confidence through Chinese language, either speakers or translated material. <coughs> the concierge um, at hotels or um, front of house staff in motels and any accommodation are also great people to help give guidance and make recommendations. 
just to highlight this, um, again, one thing that is really important if we are getting visitors in our traditional off-season, so over autumn, winter and spring, it's very, very important that as an extended network of tourism operators, we're able to be very clear about what is available and what is open and considering developing a regional directory by month um, would really make a difference. It's um, important that um, if you are closing down that you make sure that people know that you are and if you are open that there is a network so that um, people can send people to great experiences and not be disappointed. Um, a bit more information on eyesights and um, not just relevant to eyesights but any assistance really that um, help in Mandarin is appreciated um, comprehensive advice is desired. Blackboard signage in Mandarin is a really good way of communicating language. Our Chinese visitors do not want permanent Mandarin signage um, everywhere. They want to come to our place and experience it um, as it is, but they do want access to language, so Blackboard signage can make a real difference. This diagram shows a number of options around language and at the very least having visual icons can make a real difference. Um, visual symbols are often more easily understood and are a very easy way of um, providing direction without having to use a Mandarin signs or blackboards which seem less permanent. Um, if to take it up a level there is actually um, assistance in Mandarin, having handouts and accommodation or um, at events and experiences can really help, particularly if the safety issue is at stake. Um, headsets if you've got more of a cultural or um, in-depth um, story to be told. And signage is important, very important, if, um, if safety is required, but ideally in a subtle way. QR codes can link to language, so you can get translations done, put that up on the website. Um, it could be around menus or general back story information, and Chinese will link to that and understand what's going on. Google Translate's great, but only for informal things, not for anything that's um, very formal. Often um, tenses can get, um, and timings can get mixed up. If you have a WeChat account or use WeChat, there is a translate function on that um, and also you can have a landing page on an official WeChat account that can also help. Um, and geo GPS coordinates for use in Google Maps, not um, just a physical written address. At the very, um, the, the most um, efficient and effective way to communicate is actually having lang language speakers, um, Mandarin staff, guides, drivers for a day that you can call on, and particularly a Mandarin website if you are very strongly targeting this market. In terms of planning tools, one of the key things with product is not just having great product but making sure it can be found and we can enable our visitors to plan great experiences through a visual spatial itinerary either regionally or networking with people near you, um, having a visual map that provides facts and information, um, what different things are in your region and in your area um, can make a really big difference and help people understand what can I do, how long will it take me, what am I interested in um, and where is that in relation to where I am. So there is currently amongst our visitors extensive use of GPS mapping and if we're able to link into that, um, it makes us much, much more easy to be uh, easily found. Um, deals. Deals are very important to Chinese and it's much more than actually a financial saving, although that's very attractive. It's about relationship and respect. Um, and deals can build goodwill, um, enable um, uh, trigger participation and if you want more information there's a lot more information on deals um, in the full report. Um, deals don't need to be big, they can be relatively small and so a, a deal for uh, multiple bookings um, or in, um, involved, becoming involved in multiple experiences is really appreciated. Um, for bookings and payments, um, just some things to look out for. Language, um, certainly if, it, if you've got um, things that are easily understood in Chinese it will help. 
Um, have cancellation policies if you need to, um, because often um, people will cancel if they change their minds. Uh, make sure that you are available to take bookings after hours. Often independent travellers will want to make bookings the night before, um, if they can. And if they know that they must pre-book, they will. So if bookings are tight, make sure that that is made very clear so that it encourages pre-booking. Um, if you do need to know about children, again make that clear. Quite often Chinese are not necessarily booking um, children in, particularly around accommodation. And confirmation, if you require that, make sure that you do that again. And text or WeChat is a good way of confirming. WeChat, again, we have a section of that on the um, website, but WeChat is a great platform potentially, not just for booking but also for payment. Um, seamlessly easy and can be set up in English or Mandarin. Very strongly recommend that you um, look at getting Union Pay, the preferred um, credit payment for Chinese. It's available um, from major New Zealand banks and I believe the rate uh, is lower than traditional credit cards. So a couple of things about uh, making sure that you can be found. Review what's ha what you're doing in the physical world around signage, networking and addresses, but also have a very good and clear plan for your digital um, visibility and um, through visibility generated by sharing on Chinese social media sites. If you are particularly interested in this, again, we have a lot more information on digital development, on product development, um, and on signage um, and communication online. Extending experiences, an opportunity to build um, and add value to a region, uh, not just a one um, a one place wonder. And this gives an example of how you might build up regional richness and experience. Some of it paid, some of it unpaid. Um, and ideally, if you were to set this up digitally in a region, you would be able to search by particular areas of interest. That gives you a very short overview um, of building experiences. If you would like to plan this, we have the um, Lean Canvas planning format which you can use to help build up a plan for targeting the China market, the independent traveller market, or in fact if you want to you can use this framework for your market overall. Um, we have a couple of tools that will help you develop a communication plan and these are things that you might want to just check. Again, do you have a physical communication plan and a virtual plan? And if you want any help with that, again, you can go to the website or look at our enablement partnership list, which is online. Um, again, tools uh, to look at how you're building visibility and frameworks to fill in a few If you would like to follow this up for more information and challenges, go to our website NZC and Tourism or check some of the other links that we have available here.